You're listening to DraftKings Network. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. I know that many of you um, recently here, because I was getting chased around all weekend about it still, are tired of the amount that we and the sports media in general talks about LeBron. I do want to just celebrate for a moment. LeBron's going to outlast Skip Bayless, who's been chasing him around. I do want to absorb for a moment the idea that LeBron James at his age, the oldest player in the league, would take out Germany in the Olympics while Wade and Mello are on podcasts telling you what could have and should have been Wade's like, if I hadn't been injured, I'd go after Michael Jordan. And Carmelo's like, I had a chance, but I didn't want to be the fourth option with Bosch, LeBron, and Wade. I could have been a part of that team. The idea that the two of them are doing their media careers while LeBron wins internationally as the oldest player in the league, please do not allow the celebration of Tom Brady and Diana Taurasi and what some athletes are able to do in their 40s to not allow you to absorb the greatness that is still on display when LeBron is carrying Team USA over Germany. It's one thing to dominate your NBA team. It's like, all right, there's a couple stars on every team. He's still the best player in his team. That's not surprising. He's on a team now with all the best players in this league, and it's just, I'm the guy at the end, give me the ball, 40-something years old. It Like... I know it's we're, we're we've said it too much with LeBron, but it's just unbelievable. I'm telling you that I made fun of the decline of Team USA when they were having close games against Carlos Arroyo and a Puerto Rico team that I was making fun of the center with gel in his hair who was 40, in other words, LeBron's age. LeBron is now the center I was making fun of for Puerto Rico that was challenging the dream teams. Ortiz was his name, right? The Puerto Rican guy who had gel in his hair. I was making fun of that Puerto Rican team because it was Carlos Arroyo and this 40-year-old center Ortiz. LeBron is now the 40-year-old. I... uh. I do want to talk with you guys about what Mello and Wade were doing last week as we get into the history writing portions of Mello and Wade telling you, hey, it can be Anthony Edwards and Jason Tatum's league now, but you're not going to forget what we built over the last 15 years that everyone has had to topple here. Because I do want to take some inventory of what these guys did to the sport over the last 15 years, for better or for worse. Yeah, was it tough as hell? Yeah, it was tough. But also, too, I think I was the, the perfect person to play that role. It ain't a lot of people that could play that role. Bron is an amazing player, but you got to learn. You got to work around him, right? And you to work with him. Um, and so, as you see, in my first, the first years we were together, we did everything together, right? We did every interview together, every press conference. Every time you see him, you see me, because we had to be so lock step because we knew I knew everybody was going. Nobody wanted it. My team didn't want it. My family didn't want it. They were pissed. Brown team, didn't, Brown team didn't want it. No one wanted that to happen. The game of basketball didn't want it to happen. So I made sure I linked myself with Brian even more because I knew we had to be so tight right. or it was going to be a failure. And we didn't want to, and I didn't want to be a part of that. And yeah. so there we go. Tony, I can't hear your microphone. Uh, what are your thoughts, Greg, on the idea that Carmelo was saying in the middle of all of that? Carmelo is saying, I didn't want to be the fourth option with Wade and Bosch, not in my prime, and LeBron. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's his ego talking. He didn't want to be a role player at that point in his career, I guess. But what, what Wade just said, though, that didn't happen right away. Like, I think it was his second. It was the second season when Wade finally said it's LeBron's team. Oh no! Right? But what did happen right away is they were giving all those press conferences next to each other. In fact, it was super unusual in that LeBron wanted to get here. And look, man, let's let's examine this for a second because these people changed what the sport has been over 15 years in a number of different ways. Playing it positionlessly, uh, the 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 moves that have had to be made to countermeasure what it is that Wade was saying that nobody wanted there. What is the legacy of those 15 years in terms of altering the power the way those guys did? So much so 
turning it into AAU buddies who are just going to control the sports by teaming up their powers, for Melo to say, I didn't want to be the fourth option in my prime, I wasn't going to give up uh, what it is that it would have had to be given up in order to join what would then end up altering the sport. Yeah, and, and Wade did exactly that, right? Wade, Wade, Wade sacrificed himself. To, to fit with LeBron, and, and it, it took a minute to, to get there for him, I think, but he did, and that's part of the Wade's great legacy, I think, that isn't talked about enough, is how he sacrificed his ego and, and his structure in the pecking order to, to be second fiddle to LeBron, and rightly so. Can I just go back for a second? Wade is on Mello's podcast. They haven't played in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> What is LeBron doing holding the ball in all the important minutes as we're playing for our country still at the end of these basketball games? What is it about his body, his endurance, his will, his greatness that allows him to dwarf even giants like Wade and Mello as the oldest player in the league right now, hiring his son, hiring his coach, running the Lakers, running Hollywood, running Team USA. He'd run Team USB if Billy got his wish of having a second Team USA in the tournament. <laughs> Dan, you know who was locked in? Jose Ortiz. You nailed it, by the way. He was 40 years old at the time of the 2004 Olympics. Played for Los Cangre Cangrejo de Santurce. <laughs> Chael Sonnen had suggestions as to why this is happening. Yeah. We all just kind of ignored him, though, because we didn't like his suggestion. Uh, no, that's probably what's happening. We just stopped carried, caring about where it is that these guys wins in the mar win in the margins. If they're all cheating, uh, all the other cheaters should cheat better if LeBron's cheating better than they are. Um, I, I, I hate to fact check Dwayne Wade when he said no one wanted them to get together. I wanted them to get together. Wow. I very much so wanted them to get together. In fact, I went out and I celebrated the night that they got together. They hadn't won or done anything, but I went out with my Dwayne Wade to jersey La to La Carreta and I was celebrating with a pot in a pan the fact that the big three came together. So the idea that no one wanted this to happen, phooey. How is it that we're learning for the first time that their families didn't want it? That's not true. Okay, so he's lying now. I'm not saying that. I'm that just, is what. You know. That's exactly what. No, I mean, if someone writes a nonfiction story, would you say they're a liar? No, they just are piecing together nonfiction. You think that what Dwayne is doing there is noveling? He's, I think he's that nonfictioning. Uh, you know, I mean, sometimes a bit of revisionist history. Sometimes I feel we like. forget that he was a bull and a calf. Also, I'm just uh -huh. saying that doesn't have anything to do with what it is that he's claiming there. Well, no, when we say heat lifer, but we make a couple stops along the way, yeah. then that's don't, not factually don't, accurate don't as go well. Don't your greatest hits. Stay on. I'm I'm not. I'm just saying. Sometimes stay. when we go back and we romanticize things, sometimes we don't exactly, you know, Remember. we fib a little uh -huh. bit. You know, just mm -hmm. stretching the truth. I'm not saying it's a lie. I would never call, never call, pri uh, what a flash a liar. I would never, would never do that. I'm just saying. Sometimes uh, we forget the facts a little bit. When I when, when I was growing when I was growing up, my dad would always he didn't like lying, obviously, but he found there was like a little white lie mm -hmm. he was okay with. But the bigger lies. What Give me an a, what example. What is a white lie? Yeah, what's an example? What's a white lie is is complimenting somebody just to make them feel good. Like what? Like like if, if I'm dining at, at someone's house and they've made me a meal and I think the chicken is really overcooked and it's a little bit dry mm -hmm. and I'm like surreptitiously pouring gravy on it to just moisten it, I'm going to say to the to my host, that's a this is a beautiful chicken. My dad is such an here. annoying dinner guest because he always takes like the most obscure item and it's just like, man, these sautéed mushrooms are killer. He's not going to mention the steak, the brisket, the mashed potatoes that you like are homemade. They're he not from the up box. for the unsung heroes. He's just, he's, he'll find the most, like the easiest thing that's not yeah. that impressive. He's just like, man, this bagged Caesar salad is kicking my ass. It's kicking my mm -hmm. ass. It's the rock star of the play. He does yeah. that. The rock star. He, I mean, he, it always has to be the least important item. No, I, th I think Who that that goes. The Caesar salad? I think that goes along his the white lie situation, right? Because he could not like the chicken, but if he compliments something else, he's not telling you he doesn't like the chicken. He's just complimenting you on something else. There's no need to tell someone I don't like this. You just tell them what you like. Yeah. No, that's that's perfectly. I've, mm -hmm. I've named a, a glass of ice water as the rock star of the play. Really? You know, it doesn't even have to be wow. uh, something eaten with a fork. Hmm. You know, another thing my dad does. In if like let's say a restaurant has like it's like homemade like hot sauce 
before the food comes, he takes the hot sauce, he pours it into his hand, and he just like eats it like a shot mm, of the hot sauce I love in his that. hand. Yeah. Oh yeah. In like the center of his hand. Like yeah. you think maybe he'd go on a finger. You wash or your hands after you touch the menu or not? Uh, you know, uh, let's not get into my personal hygiene. I don't yeah. think of him as Hip-hop. a good hand washer. You're just having hot sauce straight out of the palm of your oh, hand. Oh, yeah. That's Put lovely. it on the poll at Lebitard Show. Both of these questions at Lebitard Show. Is hot sauce out of the palm of your hand lovely? And also, can ice water ever be the rock star of the dinner plate? Because I don't think it can be. Oh, 100% can be, especially because mm. I know Greg just came back from Europe. They don't do ice water there. They, they hate oh, ice cubes. You get trip? back from a summer abroad, you drink a nice cold crispy uh, ice water mm. oh, rock <laughs> star <laughs> usa <laughs> baby dan in your, in your air-conditioned house <laughs> One you know, more thing about Jose Ortiz, he was not only the captain of the Puerto Rican national team, <laughs> he's the same age as my dad. I know, I know. He, he, was, uh, <laughs> he yes, was born in 1963. Yes, I know, it was ridiculous. The Team USA was struggling against Ortiz, and now we've got our own Ortiz, and it's LeBron. Ice water cannot be the rock star, rock star. of the, the sure table. It, can. it yeah, can't it can. be. Can, yeah. No, it's not. No, we... we we don't even have rock stars anymore. There are no rock stars. Hey, it's Mike Ryan. And by now, you know how much I love Game Time. It is the greatest app for the secondary ticket marketplace that I've ever come across. I was recently in Chicago, a Major League Baseball mecca, and I found incredible tickets on the Game Time app, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, and views from your seat, don't forget their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So do yourself a favor do what I did, do what I routinely do. Whether it's baseball games or summer concert season where all the big names in music are presently touring, use the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DAN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DAN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Don Lebatard. If you lob a 30 mile an hour fastball to a major leaguer, Of course they're going to hit a home run. The worst major leaguer in baseball is going to hit 10 or 12 home runs under that format being pitched that way. So they should be throwing curveballs? No. What's your solution here? It's it's a a fake event. It's like not even real. Stugatz. Dad, you had a (laughs) funeral. Okay. Those were my deck shoes of long standing. They real meant event, something though. to me. Real shoes? <laughs> okay, right, exactly. Right. No, no, no. Okay. I am with you, Greg. What's wrong with that? <laughs> he got me on that one. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. There are a million things around here that we try uh, successfully and unsuccessfully to disguise from you. The number of technical difficulties that we are having today that I don't think we've masked very well, but perhaps we've masked better than I think in terms of microphones not working at the right time, people not being able to hear me, everything being just a note off. Is it possible that Stugatz knew only two microphones in that studio were going to work, so he went to New York to get a microphone that worked, (laughs) and Greg is sitting in his chair because Greg's microphone doesn't work? Mm. You've told me that people are tired of the Stugatz is out content. You yeah. just got done telling me that, and then you, uh, this is your move. No, this but is we're not doing that do. content. I'm just asking, I'm just explaining to people. I'm trying to, look, I'm taking everybody behind the fourth wall, because you, you brought us behind the fourth wall, and there's technical issues, and that's just one of them. Stugatz wasn't irresponsible. He knew that there was going to be a microphone issue, so he went up to New York to kind of mm-hmm. have us work around that situation. Now, Chris hitting the wrong sounds was 100% Chris. It had nothing to do with technical Whoa. difficulties. Well, can't, can't, eh. It was mislabeled. I also really wanted us to just pretend like we couldn't hear Tony for the rest yeah. of the day, but yeah. that I couldn't get the message out quick enough. I kept dropping dimes, and then Dan would look at me like I didn't say anything, and I was like, Dan, that was money. What, what happened? I'm going to be like honest it. with you. I unplugged it so you wouldn't stand next to me. What if we convinced Tony he was a ghost, like in South Park? <laughs> What? Let's get I'm away down. from the Stugat uh, nonsense. Let's do a stat of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. 
Star of the day, star of the day, it is the star of the day. Stat of the day is presented by Miller Lite. This stat is courtesy of Taylor. I actually I haven't seen it yet. I'm not sure what it is. Um, since April 1st, Stugatz has been on 55% of Le Batard shows. <laughs> good for him. Is that good? <laughs> is it? Right. That's the way to do it in a contract year? Yeah. He's flexing, man. He's, he's playing it. This is a free market, and he's out there earning it, leveraging it. More power to him. I'd argue, I mean, last two shows, he's been part of the show while not being part of the show, so... I'd argue less power to him. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> Some power to him. No. Nah, Minimal nah, power nah, to him. No, nah, no, zero. A... I mean, look, FAN had a chance to give him the power and then didn't give him the power. You got to be careful if you give oh. Stugatz the power. That, great uh, power comes great responsibility. He doesn't like that part. That's ah. that's the part that he doesn't like. He just wants the great power, none of the great responsibility. Mm. Great power comes great responsibility because you have to do everything. <laughs> that is what gone. happens. Like yes, it. that's a good T-shirt. With great power comes great responsibility. Because <laughs> that's exactly how that goes. I like that less. <laughs> God Bless Football is uh, fast churning toward you, the award-winning God Bless Football. Uh, Greg Cody just revealed to me something. Uh, many of you who have been listening and watching for a while know that Greg Cody had that uh, pair of deck shoes for about 30 years that he wore with his rotten talons and no socks for three decades. Just horrific shoes that he once buried. They had a name, did they not? Um, I love how I use, as you say, just horrific shoes. My dad nods along, like, "Yep." I mean, they are. Checks I, mean, out. I still it's have just, them. I, no, well, you buried them. You oh, buried the, the ones I buried. Yeah. Do they have a name? Do, you um, buried them in your backyard in a ceremony. I thought that they had a name. Did they not I, have I, a name? I think they were Deck and Deckel, weren't they? Okay, they, Deck Cody and Declan Cody. Yeah, Deck and Deckel, something like that. Uh, they they are buried you in the what backyard, it was and you still got it wrong. I, I still have my deck shoes though, but they're relegated. You know, they're, they're not number one anymore. They're number three. Wow. And so that's a major change in my closet. What happened? Well, I have new uh, dogs on my feet. Oh. You know, Ooh, I mean, let's I, see those doggies. They're, they're beauties. I don't want to advertise shoes, but. All right. Oh, he's he, lifting he the leg. He has purchased Skechers. Purposely hiding them from the camera? Like, he, lift them up. <laughs> he can't lift his leg that high and his belly gets in the way. He doesn't have the Chris Cody flexibility. But he Dad, can you put your he foot over your head? He is to the phone. No, Poor no. He has foot over my head. He has proclaimed them the greatest shoes he has ever had. Uh, what did those cost you, Greg? Uh, my father continues to buy shoes from Publix, five ninety nine in in the bin at the grocery store. It's very strange. <laughs> my 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 mother, my mother. This has been a funny conversation to watch recently because my father's eighty and he continues to be cheap. She just keeps looking at him. She's seventy nine. What are we saving it for? Like when? Like what? Are, isn't this the time that we were saving it for? Why? Why are you still being cheap? This is a big expenditure for yeah. you. You buying Skechers shoes is you really throwing down some money on wardrobe. I was shocked how expensive shoes are nowadays. Uh, and, and these are lightweight, too. You know, you're not getting a lot of heft for the money because they're so lightweight. They're comfortable. Yeah. You walked I, around the Cliffs of Moher in those? I did. I sure did. Uh, in, in Ireland, uh, climbed all the way up uh, past the sign that said, uh, danger, you may fall into the cliff and kill yourself. And there's actually a plaque there for all the people who have died at the Cliffs of Moher. But these shoes... I knew we were going to get to the vacation whether I, I wanted they to call or not. Like, it cost like 75 or 80 bucks. Wow. Those should be heavy okay. That's at it? that price. Exactly. They yeah. should be hefty. The, the more shoes cost, the heftier they should be, they I should think. They should be. Yeah. yeah. Like big work boots. Mm -hmm. you know, no, you gotta... I disagree. Lighter. They should be lighter. They no. should be comfortable. They should be... Those shoes look comfortable. I'm they... walking on air in these shoes. Mm -hmm. They're beauteous. They're Seriously, I, I don't brag about shoes, even deck shoes. Is that a know. word? Is beauteous a word? Yeah, it is now. Sure is. That kind of thing. Uh, E-O-U-S, I guess, on the end of butte. Yeah. Uh, but they're great. I, I, I'm, the older I get, the more uh, pleased I am with 
life's simple pleasures. And to me, when you buy a pair of shoes and you actually think to yourself, these are the best shoes I've ever worn in my life. I was grinning like a mule eating briars for three days. Mm Mm-hmm. You Sometimes know. I do that. I want to go buy multiples of the same shoes because you can never find them again. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And and I I I surveyed the entire uh, line of shoes. Yeah, because you know? I was what I was looking for was a an upscale a, a handsome pair of sneakers. Oh, and you, you found know, walking it. shoes. Yeah, but are these even considered walking shoes? Let me see. Lift that up. What again? are these sneakers? I'll they don't see know there. what they want to be. I think that's yeah. what people at restaurants wear. Sneakers. I think they're hybrids. Yeah. Like kitchen workers wear those. What kitchen workers? Yeah, I've worked the backbone in the of our society. <laughs> I have. I work in a kitchen every day. Made a beautiful meal last night. Uh, made a sandwich called the Gerber. Ooh, not, go on. Not named after the baby, but. Um, it uh, it was in a famous St. Louis deli. It's a St. Louis sandwich. Uh, I could give you the recipe right now, but it was it was you Please know do. It, it was good. Yeah. One of my dad's moves is whenever he travels, he comes back and the first meal he makes has to be like from that place. Like this past <laughs> Sunday, he had an Irish stew. Yeah, I Ireland. honor the country I've just been in. <laughs> I and I think they appreciate that. Thank you. Do you have a Guinness? Yeah, beef and Guinness. <laughs> And uh, controversially, it was good. The actually. mashed potatoes were on the side. Wow. The mashed okay. potatoes were also boxed. Mashed potatoes are the rock star of that dish. No, not these. Really? They they, Christopher just ratted me out. They weren't from scratch. They were huh. boxed. But the uh, what he does is he takes like three of those like Evan homemade like Evans pre-made Evans. microwave, Bob yeah. Evans. and he like pours them into a Evans. big bowl, right? And he, like he tries to present them as if they're his mashed potatoes. Well, don't it's ruin like, the secret recipe. I, I saw you shoveling them out of the Bob Evans package. I, 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 I wasn't do it, doing it surreptitiously. Yeah. It was there for everyone to see. But I make it my own, and here's how. I put a little S&P on there. Okay, a little S&P goes without saying, but also yeah. um, I used Kerrygold. The oh, oh Kerrygold. Kerrygold. Nothing but the best. Yeah, and then you, you mix it real good. You whip it good. And, uh, and and it was lovely. I mean, it was beautiful. Was he supposed to serve it out of the box, Chris? I yeah, mean, come on. On Thanksgiving, he, you know... Real potatoes. Well, that's a that's a special holiday, special and, and yeah. your mother, who, you know, doesn't lead the league in kitchen. Oh boy! Oh uh, no! Your mother oh, no. Uh, makes the mashed potatoes oh, no. every Thanksgiving. No, no. no she she would no. admit that. She'd admit it. No, she yeah, makes, just like I'd admit that I'm fear salicata. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> July's ending with a bang. UFC 304 with not just one, but two titles on the line. Get your own crown. Jump in on all the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC, with welterweight and interim heavyweight titles rounding out the main card. But it is a stacked card of fights up and down. And speaking of stacked, if you're new to DraftKings, listen up. New customers bet just 5 bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code DAN, that's D-A-N, code DAN, for new customers to get 150 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. See terms and response. Responsible gaming resources at dkng.co slash MMA. Don Lebertard. Chris, what was happening there? Can you please just explain to me? Just give the audience a glimpse into what's happening inside your soul as your father is uh, delivering clunker after clunker. It's just not surprising. He was texting me last night trying to get lines for it to make it funnier. And I was just like, I don't know if this one works. You're not really bringing anything to the conversation. It's just classic Greg Cody. Stugatz. Actually, uh, Christopher and I never had that conversation because I did reach out to him and got zero response. That's not true. That's I can show you my text right now. I, I just did, I wasn't a fan of it. <laughs> All right, show me that text. There are the Cody's tag teaming the show to kill it. The Cody's as the crazy tag team duo, the show killers. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats. Off air for some reason. Off air. Greg, can you stop typing for a second so yeah, that we don't have to away. hear you typing okay, while I'm we're busy in, working? In my defense, I am working. I'm doing 
show research, I'm uh, fine-tuning the question that I plan on presenting to Ron. Okay, that's you're that's welcome. Fine. You could have all you could have done that the 15 minutes before we were on air in the prep time that we had before this. I was uh, too busy not doing another back in my day. Could yeah. be a good question that took a long time. Yeah, it could be. Thank you, Billy, for always supporting Greg Thank in you, times Billy. of need. Uh, Greg Cody has told me again off air, not on air, that he was locked in a castle in Ireland. He got locked in. He it was got, his hotel. He got into a, a car accident in Ireland that his wife is a terrible backstreet driver who spent the entire time screaming at him about how he was driving. And also, he forgot his computer at the rental car place and drove 100 miles before realizing that he had forgotten it. So had to drive back in order to double. In, in the, he had to Dublin back and go and get the computer. It wasn't just his computer. It was him and his wife's, his wife's passport. Yeah, we had to go back. He I lost think. their passport in but, Ireland. But how is it that you told me all the interesting stories? We've been on for a while now, having all sorts of technical difficulties. I could have used all the content. Why did you tell me it during the break? And then when you could have been preparing your question for Ron McGill during the break, why did you start doing that as soon as we started the segment? You know, I take things in order. I'm not a great multitasker. I take them one at a time. That kind of thing. Uh, on, on the latest Greg Cody Show podcast episode, I talk a lot about my Ireland trip. I don't want to bore your listeners because, you know, we did have some calamity over there. I'm not going to pretend like we didn't, but overall it was a beautiful experience. Did you get out of the castle? Eventually. It, wow. it took like 45 minutes of harrowing back and forth. Thank you. Back and forth between what? I mean, they... You got to listen to the podcast, He got I locked guess. in his hotel room. Well, it was a castle hotel. But it yeah. was... Let, let, he it got locked seed. in his hotel room. That's true. I did. <laughs> what can I tell you? They, they had to, like, take a pole and, like, put keys up, like, to the second floor. No, not keys. <laughs> that would have been too easy. Mm -hmm. They set up a screwdriver. I had to, from the inside wow. of my room, <laughs> I had to remove the deadbolt. Harrowing. That didn't work. Yeah. You know, eventually they, you know, the, the king of England comes over and breaks down the door with his right foot. You know, we, we got out eventually and they comped us the room. Wow. So, so my, my whole ruse about being locked in worked. No, I'm just kidding. Was there a well, moat? There was not a moat. Ooh. No, that sort of disappointed me. But you know what there was? Ron, I don't know if you know this, Greg moat. this breed. The, um, the Irish wolfhound. Oh, great dog. Big, what? tall, oh, very wire hair dog. Very tall. It almost yeah. has the, the, the face of a lion. In, in, I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll send you a picture and you'll see what I mean. One of the most majestic animals I've ever seen. So we pull into this castle hotel and there standing alone was a, a beautiful Irish wolf hound just looking at my rental car. And, and eventually he moved, but hmm. man, what a beautiful sight that was. I, I, I want to get me one of those. I've always talked about having a, oh, yeah. a greyhound or a whippet. Now... Uh, my, my sights are on an Irish wolfhound, but can you even get that dog in the States? You can get any dog in the States. Uh, oh. just, you know, you got to be careful what kind of climbing you keep that dog in. I've actually seen Irish wolfhound statues at some of the big, you know, I, I don't think they call them mansions in Great Britain. But yeah. <clears throat> some of the, you know, some of the. Yep. Some yeah, of the manors. The manors. There you go. The manors. I've seen actual wolfhound statues. I uh, love in, that in dog. the front door. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I say it. They remind me of a lion. Yeah. I tell you, it has a certain face. It looks nothing like a lion. It, well, it, uh, you, you didn't see this one. I, I showed the photo. It looks, like, it, look, it looks like a Benji on steroids is what it looks like. I, I showed a photo of the of my wolfhound to uh, the bartender at, at to Toner's. Really? At one of the, uh, the literary pubs we went to. And without literary prompting, pub. he said it looks like a, in an Irish brogue. It says it looks like a lion. Were you getting an icy great. toner? Ah. What's a literary pub? You know what? James, they have pictures of James Joyce all over the place. The umpire? Double J. No, not the, the umpire. That's Jim. A famous writer of the 19th century, called, or was it the 20th century? The guy who ruined Andres Galarraga's? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he, he's famous in Ireland, it apparently. Andres. But, um... None it was of just, I, right. I'm, I, Christ almighty, can yeah. you guys get one thing right? Between uh, any of you, I like have a all of you Ron together, I nailed like Manor. Dude. All of, <laughs> all Armando of you. Armando Galarraga. They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the 
mostly, big cat. Mostly 20th century. Uh, Ron, I'm sorry for wasting your time. I've got some videos to show you here. I also would like at some point for people to just put up on uh, on the screen an assortment of the wonderful artistic photos that Ron McGill took in Africa because he really is an extraordinary uh, nature photographer. Uh, but I also want to play for you some video here. This is in California. Uh, federal law requires people to stand 50 yards away from the sea lion and local business leaders want sea lions kicked out here uh, before the city closes off beach access because of encounters like this one where the sea lion is basically just running people Let's off see. off uh, you know and these animals are more afraid of us than we are of them but what's happening here is this just panic ron uh, no the problem is that uh, these sea lions have become incredibly habituated to people so believe it or not they don't fear people anymore uh, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are just playing games and saying, listen, this is my beach, clear the beach. I don't see any aggression. I don't see them opening their mouths or going after anybody. I think they're almost actually enjoying the thrill of watching these foolish people run away like, you know, little roaches when the lights go on. What are some of the greater examples you could give us, Ron, of animals that are afraid of us, even though we think of them as, uh, you know, that we're more afraid of them than they are of us? You know, a classic one would be lions. I mean, as you heard when we were out just there, out there in Southern Africa recently, the, the rangers told us, listen, if we stepped out of a vehicle, the lion would most likely just run away. Uh, and that's likely what would happen. Um, you know, a lot of these larger animals, believe it or not, are generally speaking, afraid of people. That's a natural human fear from generation to generation when humans hunted everything. So the bottom line is, most animals naturally are afraid of human beings. Having said that, once they've been exposed to humans for a long time or people start feeding them or, you know, start basically desensitizing them to human beings, that's when they become the most dangerous. Ron, I saw a bird last week. It wasn't a flamingo. I, I can't remember what it was called. but it was also, Yes, that's what it was. It was pink from eating shrimp. And, and we know that flamingos are also pink because they eat a lot of shrimp in their diet. If I ate enough shrimp, would I then turn pink as well? Wow. Well, it's not it's not just shrimp. It's a lot of different crustaceans that have what we call carotenoids in them. And those carotenoids are what give them that color. Uh, and yes, you know what, uh, Jessica, if you ate enough uh, carotenoids, yes, you would start getting a bit of a salmon color to your skin. Because mm. uh, I tried. But it also might be toxic because you're eating just too many of them. <laughs> salmon color. <laughs> That's funny. Mickey? Uh, By the way, Ron, I just texted you a photo of that wolfhound that looks like a lion. Wow. Tell me, tell me if I'm right. Can you confirm? Text to the video team? Um, uh, that's a great looking wolfhound, a beautiful man, a nice guy, nice hedges. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll give you that. It's a little okay. bit of a longer snout and then kind of squished head than a lion, but the way he's sitting there, it surely looks regal like a lion. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'll give you a little a pass on that one, Greg. There you go. Thank when, you, Ron. Send that to Chris, and then Chris can send it to video, and then everyone can see I'm it. I'm going to do it right yeah. now as we speak. Yeah, that would be a better way to do it so that we can, you know, share with the audience. Again, it, could be, it, could be, it could be an immature lion that hasn't grown in his full mane yet, giving ah. that big rounded look. There you okay, go. Because oh. Immature lions have that kind of scrawny mane that that wolfhound seems to have right there. My Again, Greg, man. could have been done during the break, during the preparation. Dad, for yeah, this question, Dad, go to your text we, messages I'm with Ron. I'm doing it right now. Christ Almighty. Let, let's play the video for Ron as we uh, just wait for Greg Cody to try to figure out, in general, his life. Let's play the Send video it. for Ron. Of Yes, thank you for informing us that you have now sent it to video of this gator. Uh, and in the general stupidity of a Florida man, because, of course, it's a Florida man, opening a beer with the help of a gator's mouth ron what is uh, now that's, what, what, that's what is happening what is happening to humanity here you know what this is this is all social media crap is what this is uh this is all let's get this on video let's see how many likes we can get this is just it's stupidity dan that's all i can say about it is stupidity and uh these guys think they're being cool and they are you know they're they're i'll tell you what they're they're living proof for natural selection the alligator can't stick its tongue out correct no it cannot stick its tongue out uh, put it on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show. Did you know the alligator could not stick its tongue out? That was also not an, a dangerous enough alligator to actually be problematic, correct? Uh, no, it was dangerous enough, dangerous enough. I could have grabbed his hand and pulled him in the water and drowned him. No question about it. Given a pretty bad wound, um, you know, it's, it's not going to consume the guy, but it certainly could have inflicted a really bad injury. And trust me, if that had happened, you know what would have happened next? The authorities would have found that gator and euthanized it because it took out a stupid guy.
I thought it was crocodiles that couldn't stick out their tongue. Or is it both? No, all crocodilians. All crocodilians. They have a tongue, but it's fixed in the bottom jaw. So it can move up and down, but they can't stick it out of their mouth. Hmm. Ron, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate the time. I will remind the audience at every turn at Lebetard Show. What are you doing? What are you showing me here? What are you doing? Speak, it says crocodiles can't stick out their tongues. Yeah, but he I'm said I'm doing that a show. I just said that. I'm, yeah. All crocodilians. All crocodilians. Okay. Crocodiles and alligators. Craig, have we lost you? Have we lost? What is happening? They have aren't called alligidians, you? though, so I understand the confusion. <laughs> they should be. We oh, have yeah. the photo now that my wow, dad says. Wow, that's a beautiful dog. Looks like a lion. Oh, that's a lion. Let's oh see this God. thing that looks like a lion. It does look like a lion. Yeah, Thank you. I'm not wrong. They're screwing with you. No, they're not. That looks like a lion. I am not. I'm being honest. And I want to get invited on that yacht, Chris. Don't blow this for me. I'm telling you. (laughs) A reminder to take care of Ron McGill's substantive endowment. Uh, uh, Evidently, the listeners uh, were very strong last week for you, Ron. They they raised a lot of money. Thousands and thousands of dollars came in. Uh, thanks to you and your listeners, Dan. Uh, I, can't, I can't tell you how profoundly appreciative I am. Uh, we are grateful because I have t- seen firsthand the, uh, what it is that he does with that money and how it goes to people who show great care with the animals. So you can rest assured that if you donate to Ron McGill's Substantive Endowment, the money will get to helping people. Thank you, Ron, helping animals and helping people who help the animals. Thank you, Ron. Have a good week, guys. Take care. You were a disaster, that segment. Why? Like you were trying, you were not doing the show we were doing for the many people that we do it for. You and Ron were having a personal exchange the way that you would in another room, as if microphones and cameras weren't around. Right. Yeah, the wolfhound, the wolfhound, uh, Irish wolfhound entranced me. It did. It, it had me under a spell. So your listeners paid for your and Ron's trip to Africa. How does that work? Is, is that what happened? He said thousands and thousands of dollars were donated. Um, it's amazing that uh, got that kind of a scam going. I paid for my own trip to Ireland. I mean, unless the listeners want to donate. I mean, seriously, I got to go fund me to. You didn't pay. Re- you coup some. You of locked yourself in your castle and got a free <laughs> night of castle. Just, what, we because... were there eight nights. I mean. <laughs> You know, 12.5% of my stay. <laughs> McGill's endowment also paid for that. <laughs> Eight nights in a cast. Okay. Hey, it's Mike Ryan, and by now you know how much I love Game Time. It is the greatest app for the secondary ticket marketplace that I've ever come across. I was recently in Chicago, a Major League Baseball mecca, and I found incredible tickets on the Game Time app, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat, don't forget their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So do yourself a favor, do what I did, do what I routinely do, whether it's baseball games or summer concert season where all the big names in music are presently touring, use the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DAN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DAN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Okay, you say, I want some breakfast. Your so called boyfriend says, We got eggs in the fridge. Obviously, when you say breakfast, you mean McDonald's. Definitely a side eye situation. Bring home the bacon, steak patty, or others with a BOGO for $1 breakfast only in the app. Limited time only at participating McDonald's. Valid once a day. Must opt into rewards. Visit Meek D app for details. Ba da ba ba ba. 